Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Happy New Year. So good to see you guys all uh, in your pajamas. How many got your pajamas on? Let's see. All right. Yes. Bums. Some of you have clothes on, but you still have your pajamas on. So uh, you still should have raised your hands there. So yes, uh, Pajama Sunday. Welcome. Uh, we're celebrating the new year with Jesus. It's all about Jesus, period. So uh, good to have you out here on this uh, wet day where... Uh, this watery stuff is falling from the sky. We don't know what that is in the desert, but uh, thank you for being here today. And uh, it's PJ and Pancake Day. We still have pancakes. They're over in the admin building, so you can go over there and help yourself to some pancakes. Uh, Roy is making them. Uh, you can stay out of the, the rain and just hover over there and in the kitchen and, and get them. They're still happening, so we're still following through with what we said. So, uh, <clears throat> sorry, my, my throat's a uh, uh, I was screaming at a game yesterday, so uh, yeah, it's a, uh, I'm a little bitter about it, but that's okay. Starting the year off wrong, but anyways, so uh, we're glad to be here, but uh, we're still having uh, uh, pancakes if you want some. They're still over there, and uh, we're glad you guys came out this morning and to celebrate. How many of you stayed up last night? Did you stay up to the new year? All right, you guys are crazy, and you're out here this morning, so how many of you went to bed early? How many went to bed early? All right, yes. I also went to bed early, so uh, I was crying. But anyways, so uh, yeah, good to have you guys here. Uh, thank you for attending this morning. Thanks for attending on the broadcast. And uh, we got it up working today. Thank you for bearing with us on the broadcast. We've been having some issues, but God's blessing the new year off. So uh, we're happy you guys can join us. And you're probably in your PJs. We're just joining you. So, uh, and thank you for attending. I don't know if there's anybody on the patio, but it's wet out there. But uh, thanks for being out there if you are. And thanks for attending in your car. And all the good people in their pajamas, thank you for attending in here. Good morning. Woohoo! It's New Year. We're all like, yeah, New Year. Yeah, it's like, let's get back to normal life, right? So, uh, hey, today we are celebrating an anniversary. Anniversary. Uh, how many of you like anniversaries? Yeah, I... Uh, so most of you are like, yeah, I don't know, what's he mean by anniversary? Yeah, so, so, I like that hesitation there. So, should I raise my hand? My wife's sitting next to me. Oh, yes, I love anniversaries. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> my wife elbowed you. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, man, I love them. So uh, we're celebrating an anniversary today. It's an anniversary with Jesus. Now, uh, some of you have no clue what the heck I'm talking about. And you're like, uh, did I miss a holiday? Is there another one in there? Is there some religious holiday he's talking about? Uh, that's a holiday with Jesus Christ. It's uh, communion. Communion. We get to celebrate communion all the time. And communion is really an anniversary of recognizing what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross. And that's what an anniversary is, right? It's remembering. It's reflecting back on a meaningful moment in life. And we celebrate that moment. We, we're we're excited. Okay, maybe, maybe we just remember it, but I don't know. It depends where you're at. But, uh, we, but with Jesus, we celebrate what he's done. And we get to do that here today at Hilltop. And, and it's great because we get to do it regularly. And every time we take communion, it's an anniversary. Reflecting, remembering about a very important moment in time that actually happened where Jesus Christ shed his blood and he died on the cross and that's an important thing to remember because that forgives us of our sins. But even better, even better, he came back to life. And we can celebrate that too because he died. We one day will rise again and live with him because he died and rose again. Uh, anniversary, uh, what, what an exciting hand. Uh, how many of you are married? Raise your hand if you're married. Okay, so you guys know what anniversaries are. Uh, you celebrate uh, your anniversary. If you're not married, you probably cel an celebrate the anniversary of your birthday. It's an anniversary. We call it a birthday, but it's an anniversary. Every year comes around again. You're celebrating the day of your birth until you die, right? Uh, but some of you celebrate your anniversary for marriage, and you're wishing you died. But anyways, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you didn't know you set a goal, right? Till death do us part. It's a goal, right? No, anniversary, right? Whether that day was a good day or a bad day or a, just a meaningless day, it doesn't matter because the anniversary comes around every year and we celebrate that moment of joining together with our spouse. And so how many of you have ever forgotten an anniversary? Did you ever forget your anniversary? Oh, yeah, very few. You don't want to admit it. But yeah, I thank you for those, those honest uh, Jesus people who uh, raise their hand. Uh, you know, it's probably... Forgetting an anniversary is probably a bad deal. It's going to get you in trouble. 
So uh, this is why guys uh, go to flower shops, because uh, they forget anniversaries. We like our wives when they give us hints before. You know what's next week? Yeah, what's next week? Oh, yeah, yeah, anniversary. I knew that. I knew that was coming, right? Crap, i got to buy something. Anyways, no, uh, right, it would be, it's horrible kind of to miss an anniversary, isn't it? it it's kind of, it, it probably missing an anniversary says maybe more about the state of the relationship doesn't it? Maybe it's saying like, I mean, everybody forgets, so I get that. People forget. I'm going to stick up for the guys, right? You know, we forget. It's okay. But when we're regularly forgetting an anniversary, it may say more about the state of our relationship, that maybe the relationship has got some issues that we better start working on because we're not even considering the anniversary. It's just slipping to the back of our mind. Uh, It may say something about that. Jesus went through the same thing. If you have your Bible, you can open the book of Revelation. Uh, If you need a Bible, there's white Bibles out there, by the way. Uh, We have them for you. You can take one home. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, Jesus starts talking to the church of Ephesus. Say Ephesus. Ephesus, right? This is a church. Jesus starts speaking to them, and he's really talking about the anniversary situation. Uh, Kind of the same thing we go through. Uh, Revelation, chapter 2, verse 2. This is what it says. Jesus is talking. He says, I know, <clears throat> I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles but are not. You have discovered they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me, for Jesus, without quitting. Okay, so Jesus is acknowledging, listen, we had a good relationship. We got married. The relationship was strong. It was moving along. It was healthy. You know, we were dating. We were spending time on the couch talking. We were having a relationship with each other. It was good. But then over time, it started to wane a little. Kind of think about your marriage, right? When you first got married, it was ooh la la, can't keep your hands off each other. And maybe now it's like, don't touch me. You sit in your seat over on the couch, I sit in my seat, and I go to sleep during this show, and I'll be in bed, you know, we'll see each other in the morning. I mean, it doesn't mean they don't love each other, but that passion maybe is waning a little bit. And this is what Jesus is pointing out. Uh, Look at verse 4. He says, but Jesus talking, but I have this complaint against you. So things are good, but I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Think about that. Go back to the marriage, right? Are you you all over each other like you were when you first got married? Please, if you are, keep it at home. But anyways, right? Yeah, no one wants to see that. We try to teach the teenagers. Do you see adults running around hanging all over each other? Don't be doing that in public, right? Do it at home. But at home, you probably should be doing it. There should be a little boom chicka wow wow happening at home, right? I mean, you never get too old for that. Yeah. Turn off the lights. You don't have to see each other anymore, but you can still, you know. Like, like it's, that should still be happening. Still, Maybe not as freaking as it once did, but okay, it's all right, right? I mean, it should happen. There should be some love going on, some romance. And this is what God's saying. You're not loving the way you used to. You're not loving me. You're not loving each other the way you used to. Verse 5, look how far... You have fallen. Turn back to me. Do the works you did at first. Jesus is saying you forgot your first love. Hey, you forgot your first love. Who's our first love? Jesus Christ is our first love. We're never going to be able to love our spouse. We're never going to be able to love our children. Never going to be able to love ourselves until we love Jesus first. Because he teaches us what love is. He teaches us how to love each other. And so how can we say, oh, I'm going to love my spouse when I don't love Jesus? we got to get back to our first love. And Jesus is saying, you once loved me. You once were passionate about me. But over time, that love has waned. It doesn't mean you've rejected me. It doesn't mean you've turned away from me. But it's waning. You're starting to fall in love with other people, other things above me. And he's calling this out to the people you're turning cold towards me, your relationship. And this shouldn't be. This is the importance of anniversaries, to refire up, 
to stoke the flames, to remember who our first love is. Uh, Now, we can lose our passion for our first love in a couple ways, two very common ways. Uh, The first one is we just give our love away to someone or something else. This is incredibly common. Uh, A lot of people, we all deal with it. Other things come along, and we start to give that our focus instead of our first love. Uh, It could be anything. Sports. It could be our job. It could be shopping. It could be fishing. It could be hobbies. Uh, It it could be other people. It could be church itself. We love church, but we don't love Jesus. We love the things of church, but we don't love Jesus. And, And we just give it away. We just turn our attention away from our first love and begin to focus on other things. This is how an affair happens right? We start consciously focusing on someone or something else, and we neglect our first love. Jesus Christ is our first love, and it's very common. People do this all the time, and this is the importance of anniversaries to remind us, wait a minute, I've been looking, I should be looking up, but I've been looking elsewhere. Let me turn my heart back to my first love. Let me be reminded of who I've joined with. A very common way. Uh, Another way is we kind of just get cold. We get cold. So uh, what happens is, and this way is actually even more dangerous than the first way. Because people don't recognize it. We don't recognize it in ourselves. When we're looking at other things, we go, yeah, yeah, I mean, sports is really more important to me than Jesus. I recognize that. And, you know, okay, Jesus, I'll ask him to forgive me later because... I love my sports team or whatever, my shopping or my cars or whatever it is. And we recognize that. But the other way is, oh, no, I love Jesus, but yet our heart turns cold towards Jesus. We get more focused on doing the duties or the things of faith, and we don't love our God. It's about about showing up. It's about doing the motions. It's not a heart relationship and we become cold towards Christ, and it's just, yeah, Jesus, whatever. I mean, I went to church. Uh, yeah, I read my Bible. Yeah, I, I prayed before I ate. Okay, what's the next thing? Yeah, of course. And we just get in the motion. How many marriages happen like this? We're, we're married. We have a wedding ring. We have a marriage license. Yeah, we're married, but no one would know it if they knew us. They wouldn't know we were married. Or they think, why are you married? My goodness, you guys hate each other. What's going on, right? And we become cold, cold. It, it's the difference between being married to a cold fish and a spicy lover. There's a difference between these two things, right? Do you want to be married to a cold fish? Or do you want to be married to a spicy lover? Oh, la la, right, yeah. Right. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we need a little spice, right? It, it affects the level of our relationship, doesn't it? And many times we are a cold fish when it comes to Christ. Yeah, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. Yeah, thank you. I'm going on with my life. I don't really spend any time to connect with you. Uh, Either way, Jesus wants to be our first love. He desires to be our first love. He's going to pursue us. He's coming after us. You don't recognize it, but we are number one to Jesus, each of us individually. Not, I'm not more than you. You're not more than me. Jesus loves each of us, and he's coming after us. He pursues us. He's jealous for us. He wants an intimate, passionate relationship with us. He doesn't want us to be cold, and he doesn't want us to turn to someone else. He's like, I love you. And this is the importance of anniversaries, right? Because it's an opportunity to recognize where we are with God and to take the necessary steps we need to take to restoke the flames of passion with Christ. That's what we're going to do here today. That's what commu- communion lets us do. So if you need to make Jesus your first love again, you need to be reflected, reminded back to who he is, go to him first. If Jesus is our first love, go to him first. Go to him first. Uh, think about it. When something happens in your life, something exciting, who do you go and tell first? I mean, just think about it for a second. When something really awesome happens in your life, who is the first person you tell? 
when something really frustrating happens in your life, when you're just having a bad day, who do you go to and just vent at? I mean, you're not yelling at them, you know, I love you, but I just need to, I just need to talk. I need to tell you what happened, man. You're never going to believe what happened today. I'm going to kill him. You need to talk me off the ledge, right? I mean, who do you go to? Do you call your mom? I don't call my mom. She'd drive me crazy, right? Mom, I'm going to kill you now. Anyways, no. <laughs> I love you, mom, but yeah, all right. All right. Who do you go to? Who do you call? Who's the first person you tell? Because here's the thing. We typically tell the people we love the most, the people that are closest to us first. First. I mean, think about it. Everybody asks us, hey, how's it going? What's your day? And our answer is always the same. That's fine. It's good. Whether it is or not. But when that person that we know Maybe your spouse, uh, maybe your mom, maybe a friend, that person you care about the most, when they say, how's your day, you go, let me tell you about it. Let me tell you about it. And when something good happens, you call them, you contact them, you go over their house, you are never going to believe what happened. Let me tell you what happened. And you're excited, and you let them know. It should be the same way with Christ. If he's our first love, we should be talking to him first. We should be having a conversation with him first. Jesus, thank you for what you did. Jesus, I am ticked off. I need your help. So I'm going to kill somebody. I need you to come upon me, Jesus, and restrain me. And give me peace of heart. Or Jesus, I'm mad at you. You haven't answered. Where are you at, Jesus? I mean, he is our first love. We should always go to him first. A scripture says this, Psalms 118, verse 6. In my distress, I cry out to the Lord. Yes, I pray to my God for help. He heard me from his sanctuary. My cry to him reached his ears. Jesus wants to talk to us. He wants to be that number one person. And think about it. When we go to him first, we're, te we're telling him something. We're sending a loud message. Uh, uh, think about this. Uh, some of you have kids. Imagine if your child got engaged to be married or your your daughter became pregnant and they went around and they told all their friends they told their aunts and uncles they told grandma and grandpa they put it on social media and then they showed up at your house and said oh yeah mom dad oh so yeah sorry slipped my mind by the way i'm getting engaged i'm getting married i'm having a baby You'd be a little hurt, wouldn't you? Come on, you know it, Mom. I saw it on social media. It's about time you told me. Right? That's why you don't answer my calls anymore, don't you? Right? Yeah. You'd be at church praying, my daughter's slipping away, my son's slipping away, right? They need Jesus, right? You'd be upset. How do you think Christ feels? And it's the same thing if you're married and, oh, hey, spouse, by the way, yeah, I, I got a big promotion at work. Well, yeah, I was out celebrating with everybody else, telling them, I, I forgot to mention it to you. Or, you know, something big happened, I forgot to mention. No, no, we share this news with each other. Oh, yeah, by the way, I love you, but the doctor said I have cancer. I, I was telling everybody else before I told you. You'd be upset. If Jesus is our first love, we should be talking to him first. He should know about it. We should have a conversation at least. We should praise him. We should cry out to him. We should look for hope from him. We should be going to him. And that re-emphasizes you're my first love. Just like when we go to our spouse or our parents and we say, hey, I got engaged. Hey, I got that promotion. Hey, I'm sick. I need help. We're re-emphasizing by just doing that that you have a higher rank in my life than everybody else does. And when we go to Christ first, we're saying, Jesus, you have a higher place in my life than anybody else does. You're my first love. I care about you. I love you. It should be a priority for us. If we're going to make Jesus first in our life, take him seriously. Take him seriously. Uh, I have a friend who parks in handicapped parking all the time. You should be like, ooh, yes, right? Yeah. Uh, he used to do it all the time. He'd park in handicapped parking. Sometimes I was in the truck with him. He'd park in handicapped parking. I'm like, what are you doing? So as I'm parking a handicap, the spot's open. I said, you can't park here. This is for handicapped people. 
or old people or whoever gets one of those little wheelchair things. Yeah, whatever. I mean, this is, this is designed in society for people to park here, to help them out, right? We can't be uh, uh, taking that spot. You got two good legs. You're going to jump out, run in, and run back out. Go park in the back, man. What's the problem? And he said, his answer was always the same. His answer was like, well, oh, come on, David. You're ridiculous. He said, handicap parking, that's just a suggestion. It's just a suggestion. It's the government making a suggestion, hey, maybe let other people park here. But no one's here. They're not using it, so I'm just going to run in and run out. And I said, it's not a suggestion, dude. He said, yes, it is. I go, you can get a ticket. He goes, nah, no one's ever going to get me a ticket. I said, okay. So I started praying, Lord, give him a ticket. <laughs> the ticket, Lord. <laughs> Lap him with a ticket because there are people who need this parking spot, right? And I felt, oh, don't be parking in there with me. I'm gonna, you're going to get out. I'm going to move the truck. I ain't parking here. What's going on? Uh, he just thought it was a suggestion. There's a lot of people who look at God's word. It's just a suggestion. Who look at God and say, it's just a suggestion. I mean, his, his commands are just a suggestion. It, they're not really about following him. I mean, he's just a loving God, and he just tells us this stuff, and it's okay. We don't really have to follow it. We don't have to really live that way. It's just a suggestion. Really? Just a suggestion? Do you tell your wife that? Oh, it's just a suggestion that I stay faithful. It's all right. I'm just going to go hang out with some other ladies. It's just a suggestion. It doesn't affect anything. Or, ladies, I'm just going to hang out with some other guy. It's just a suggestion. We don't have to stay loyal, do we? But God's looking for loyalty in us. Uh, Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Jesus commands us, we must love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. That's a good suggestion, isn't it? Thanks for that suggestion. I mean, just a suggestion. God just... I mean, he just laid it out and, you know, just do your best. It's okay. It's just a suggestion. It didn't sound like a suggestion to me. It sounded like a command. It sounded like an order. It sounded like, Dad, you better clean your room or I'm going to whoop your butt. Maybe that's just me. Anyway, so, all right. Uh, we need to take Jesus seriously. Seriously. He's not a God who is not involved. He's involved in our life. And when he tells us something, it's for a reason. It means something. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. We're supposed to do it. Do it, right? Uh, and people say, well, if I follow God's commands, I'm going to have to adjust my life. Yep, you are. Because if you love somebody, you're going to adjust your life, aren't you? Kim and I got married, and you know what? Surprisingly, she's not perfect. Did you know that? She's got some issues. Yeah, I mean, that's just, I don't, but she does. Uh, you know, just her. And when we got married, there had to be some adjustments going on. We both had to make adjustments, and we changed the way we lived because we loved each other. We want to be married. We want to be together. So, you know, I try to work on my nagging so I don't nag as much, and, you know, and... I can't even come up with something for her. But anyway, so, uh, right, yeah. And we, you got to make it, you change. If you love someone and you care about them, you're going to make changes for them. And that's what Jesus is saying. Am I number one in your life? Do you take me seriously? Well, if we take him seriously, we're going to make some adjustments in our life. Doesn't mean it's a whole overhaul. You don't have to become fake. Just say, this is who I am. But you know what? God, your way is better. And I'm going to make some adjustments because I am love you because I care about you and I take what you say seriously. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't take what Jesus says seriously because we have no clue what he says. We haven't read it, right? We've got to read his word. We need to treasure his word. We need to treasure his word if we're going to make Jesus our first love treasure his word. Uh, the scripture says, hide his word in our heart, hide it in our mind. We have to know what it says. We have to read it and not just read it. Oh, I read it. I don't remember it. No, we got to read it. We got to remember it. We got to apply it to our lives. This is a love letter written from our first love to us. And he desires us to read it, know what it says. My wife uh, and I, Kim has given me uh, how long we've been together? 30-something years. I don't know. Long time. Anyways, uh, she's given me many, many cards. 
she uh, personally keeps Hallmark in stock, so uh, surviving. Uh, many, many cards, right? She's given me tons of cards. I have saved every single card she's ever given me, so I have them all, uh, which is awesome. Yeah, you guys should say, boy, he's very romantic. How awesome of that. No, um, I have a box with every card in it. Uh, now, what if I told you I have every single card, but I've never read a single one of them? I've saved every single one. I haven't read a single one of them, but I got them all. I have them all. Yeah, that, that kind of changes things, right? At first, you're like, oh, he's so romantic. Now you're like, what a loser. What do you mean? Yeah. Because just receiving the card is not what matters. It's the words inside of the card. In fact, it's the handwritten little note. You know, no one just gives a card. Oh, I bought you a card. Here you go. No, we write little messages in there. Some of you are really good. Some of them struggle. I love you. Anyways, here you go. Right? But it's that message that matters, and we sign our name to it, right? Now, by the way, I have read every card my wife has given me, just to let you know. But imagine how insulting that would be to be given intimate love letters from my wife, cards, and never to read one. Oh, but I saved them all. A lot of us have a Bible. It's a nice cup holder that we put next to the TV, right? Uh, yeah, I have a Bible. Jesus, I love you. But we don't treasure his word. We don't open it up. We don't read it. Well, what does it matter then? It's the words inside that affect our lives. And just reading them on, oh, yeah, I read it, yeah. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Nice. Okay, let's move on, right? Yeah, a lot, a lot, a No, no, it's applying it to our lives. It's hiding it in our minds and in our hearts and living on it and dwelling on it and knowing it, memorizing it and, and, and reflecting it and, and teaching it and living it and growing with it that has an effect on us. And it sends a message to our first love. I love you so much, I'm going to consume your word and I'm going to study your word, and I want to understand it, Jesus. And there's things in here I go, doesn't make sense to me, but I'm going to still chew on it. I'm going to have conversations with people because I love you so much, and I want to know your word. I want to know who you are, and I treasure your word. It's a treasure to me. That's what I want, right? That's a clear message. You are my first love. Uh, if Jesus is our first love, we're going to constantly talk about him. Constantly talk about him. Uh, constantly. Some of you are constantly talking. I'm one of those constant talkers. That's why I'm a pastor. Anyways, uh, constantly talking. Uh, think about constantly talking this way. A junior high boy or girl who has a crush. Think about a junior high boy or girl who has a crush. Uh, they're so cute, aren't they? Yeah. And you know, they don't have to tell you they have a crush. You just know, don't you? It's not a secret. You know why? Because they have a smile that goes from east to west and uh, let me tell you about school today. Uh, and they bring up some boy or girl, and you're like, ah! and you're like, mm -hmm. you got a crush? No, <laughs> it's crazy. I live it. See, she's over there having fun. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I mean, see, it's not hard to tell, right? We pick on you and make fun of you. Like it's, it's just so easy. A little junior high kid, they got a crush, a boy or girl, whatever. It doesn't matter. They don't know what to do. I like him. Did you talk to him? No. And it's like, oh, okay. What's going on? And just, it's just always talking about them, always talking about them, right? It's great. We've all gone through it. It's nothing new. We've experienced it. That's what led us to get married, right? We had a crush, and oh, it turned into something. And just talked about them constantly. This is how we should be with Christ. I mean, when we talk about Jesus, there should be a smile on our face. We should be happy. We should just, yeah, you're never going to believe what Jesus did today. Or, man, Jesus did this. Or, man, I was praying with Jesus. Or, I was reading Jesus' word, and this confused me, and I didn't understand it. Or, I was out in life, and, you know, this irritated me. People were doing this against God's word. We're just always talking about Jesus, constantly talking about him. Because he's just in our mind. He's our first love. We're passionate about him. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, guard your heart. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Well, what we talk about is what's in our heart. It's what's in our mind. Think about what you talk about all the time. What, what are those subjects that always come up? You're always talking about them. whoever you're with, you're talking about. That's what's in your heart. That's what's in your mind. Is that Jesus? It should be, because he's our first love. Here in a second, we're going to take communion. You need to have one of these cups. 
if you want to take it with us. Uh, they're back there on the table if you need one. We're going to take communion, but this is an anniversary. It's a celebration of what our Savior did. But more importantly than that, it's a chance to reconnect with your first love. And honestly, it's January 1st, 2023. What a great time to refocus. Not make a resolution, because we probably all broke them by now. But reconnect with your first love. And what does that mean for you? Because you're all in different places. Some of you, maybe you need to start a relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't have one. You've talked about Jesus. You come to church. And yeah, this Jesus, yeah, it sounds nice. People are friendly. But you don't have a relationship with them. Well, guess what? In a sense, you've got to ask them out. Jesus, I love you. I want to start a relationship with you. And I know for men, that's hard for you guys to deal with. But the concept is the same. Jesus, I want to have a relationship with you. I want you to be my first love. Because I recognize you died on the cross. I recognize that I'm a sinner. I recognize that I'm separated from you. And my only hope is coming to God through Jesus Christ. And Jesus, I choose to give you my life. Some of you need to take some time and do that. Others of you, you have a relationship with Christ. Where's that relationship at? Maybe it's gone cold. Are you a cold fish with Jesus? Maybe it's time to stoke the flames of passion. Jesus, forgive me. I want to turn my eyes back towards you. I want to live for you. Maybe some of you are just, you know, this is a correction spot of, hey, I've been moving with you. Maybe I need to tweak these areas. Maybe some of you, it's just an opportunity to worship him. God, we're right here. We're connected. We're locked in. Let me just praise your name. Let me celebrate this anniversary with joy with you. I encourage you, take a few minutes. We're going to have just let the music play. And this is between you and God. And what do you got to do with your first love? Bow your heads. Have a word of prayer with him. Talk to him. If you have your cup, I encourage you to pull it out. Open, pull that little bread out. This little bread represents the body of Jesus Christ. It represents his body, the sacrifice that he allowed to be beaten and tortured and abused. It represents his body that he came, God, in human flesh. And he lived 33 years, a perfect, sinless life. That's unbelievable that he did that. Not because he couldn't sin. He didn't sin. He chose not to. He felt the full weight of temptation that we never feel because we give in. He felt it. It's amazing what he did for us. And why did he do it? Because he loves us. He pursued after us. That junior high little kid, he didn't give up. He kept pursuing, kept going. I'm not going to let you go. We are going to have a relationship. And he suffered and he died for us. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you for sacrificing your body for our sins 
Scripture says this, On the night when Jesus was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread. He gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body given for you, given for us. Thank you, Jesus. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, we give you all glory. We give you all praise. You are our first love. We choose to live for you. We take this in remembrance of you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the same way, this juice in this cup represents the blood of Jesus Christ. It's just symbolic of Jesus' blood. It's interesting because the blood stands out more to us than the body. The blood poured out of him. Uh, it was shed from the nails in his hands and his feet to the spear in his side to the whip marks in his back that he was whipped and beaten uh, to the crown in his head. Jesus allowed the blood to come out of his body, and that blood is very important because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And Jesus sacrificed his blood. He did something that we could not do ourselves, and he said, I love them so much, I will do it for them. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Uh, the only reasonable response to someone who loves us like that is to give him everything, to love him back. We get to love him, not out of duty because we have to, because we want to. We don't come to church because we have to. We come to church because we get to. Praise Jesus. Thank you. We don't serve them because we have to. We serve them because we want to. Not because we're going to get something from it, but because we love them and we want to be with them and we want to serve them because our God shed his blood so that we could live. What an unbelievable blessing that is. That's why we love him. That's why he's our first love. Scripture says, in the same way, Jesus took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed by his blood. Right there. He made it happen. Do this in remembrance of me. Celebrate an anniversary over it. As, an, as often as you drink it, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. And Zach said it, and it's true, he's coming again. Our first love is coming to get us. He cares about us. This is not the end. The end is with him in eternity where there is no death, there is no weeping, there is no gnashing of teeth. It's a celebration of who he is with our first love. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all glory. We long for that day. We long for that day, Lord. But we choose to live for you today and serve you because you shed, shed your blood for us. We give you our lives. We love you. We take this in remembrance of you.